Hello everyone, thanks for joining. In today's lab, we're going to be utilizing the BL01. Now the BL02 and the PT201 utilize the same level one curriculum that's included in the workbook. I chose the BL01 because of its lightweight and its small footprint. But as I said, all three of these units utilize the same curriculum, so no matter which one you're on today, you can follow along. In lab four, we're gonna be building a basic binary and analog program. We'll be utilizing the kits pane and dragging the selected components into the wire sheet. We'll orient those components in the proper area. We'll link the components and configure the slots. And then we'll test the program to make sure it works. So a little background on Sedona Application Editor, also known as SAE. It was originally developed by Tritium, and it's an unlicensed, free software that anyone can use. If you've been following along in previous labs, we've used an emulator to work on an emulated controller. Today we're going to be actually hooking into the unit, into the actual controller, so with that we can get connected. So we'll open the web browser and connect to the controller. Depending on your controller, the IP might be different, but we're utilizing 192.168.9268. Type in your username and password, and you can see we're in the controller now. The next step is we're going to launch Sedona Application Editor. Once Sedona Application Editor opens up, we can open a connection, and we can do that through the open connection or file open connection. Type in the information, the host, the port, your username and password. And if you followed along in previous labs, we are in the worksheet that we've previously created. Once we've opened our connection, you can see in Sedona Application Editor the different panes. We have the navigation pane, the kits pane, the wire sheet, and the properties pane. Here's a little information about the kits. Contemporary Controls has their own folder, which will allow you to connect to their controllers. So as I mentioned, Contemporary Controls has their own kits folder, and this dives a little bit deeper into those. The BAS Control 22 controller has an I.O. kit. You can see some of the different analog inputs and outputs, the binary inputs and outputs, the universal inputs, the virtual points, the web points, etc. We start to take a little bit closer look at the analog and binary inputs and outputs here. What you see on your screen here is the individual components. So when you select a component and you drag it to the wire sheet, this is what you're going to see. You can see on this page the universal points have a wider range of usage. We can utilize them for analog voltage, binary input, thermistors, resistance, accumulators, there's a, there's a very wide range for the universal points. Here we show a little more information on the virtual points. These are utilized to share wire sheet data with BACnet and IP clients and those can read or write. The last components that I wanted to touch upon are the web components. In this controller we can program 1 through 48 and like the virtual points, these have a wide range of usage. So there's many different kits, and in each kit there's many different components. If you'd like to learn more about the individual components, beyond the brief overview that we gave in this lab, you can use the help section in SAE, or you can use the Sedona Open Reference Manual, and it really takes a deep dive into individual components and their functions and the way that they can be used. So getting back into SAE, we're going to double click the Sheets folder. And you can see our wire sheet is blank. We're going to open the Contemporary Controls BAS 22 IO. So here you can see our individual components. We're going to drag analog output 1, binary input 1, 2, and 3. 
universal input 1, 2, and 3, and virtual point 1 and 2. We're going to minimize the I.O. kits. We're going to open the Contemporary Controls web kit, and we're going to drag web component 1 and web component 2. We'll minimize the web kit, and then we'll go down to the standard kits, and we're going to open the timing, and we're going to drag one shot, and delay on. We'll minimize the timing kit, open the HVAC, and we'll drag the reset. So you can see our wire sheet is starting to get pretty messy. We'll minimize HVAC. The last component we want is in contemporary controls function, and we're looking for the FTOC component. Here you can see all our components in a very disorganized manner. So now we want to orient the components in a similar configuration to what's shown on the screen here. One thing to note is in the object-oriented programming world, the logic always flows from left to right, with inputs on the left, virtual components in the middle, and outputs on the right. So as you start to learn, you'll drag the inputs on the left, the virtual components in the middle, and the outputs on the right. So I've oriented my wire sheet to how I want it, and I just noticed that I don't have binary output 1, 2, and 3, so I'm going to add those now. So now if you adjust the universal input number 2 and universal input 3, you'll see in real time on the wire sheet. So I'll adjust number 2 now. You can see it jump all the way to 136. 77, and now if I adjust universal input 3, you can see it jumps pretty dramatically. One thing to note is in this lab we're not going to be utilizing virtual points 1 and 2 or web components 1 and 2, but we put them on here and we'll be utilizing them in future labs. So now we have our wire sheet with individual components. The problem is right now these components aren't speaking to each other. So we have two important things that we must accomplish in order to complete the program. The first is to link the output slots to the correct input slots of the related components, and then configure the slots in the components with the desired values. So now we're going to start to link our outputs into the inputs. This is what it's going to look like. So the first link we're going to do is binary input out slot to the binary output in slot. And what we're doing is we're dragging the out to the in. And you can see there it connected it. Binary input two out slot is going to delay on in slot. And then the out of the delay on is going to the in of binary output two. Binary input three out slot is going to one shot in slot. The out slot of one shot is going to binary output three in. Universal input one out is going to FTOC in. And the out slot of the FTOC component is going to the FLT value of the web component. For universal input two, the out F is going to the HVAC reset in, and then the out is going to analog output in. So there we have our wire sheet completed. Our components are linked. As we discussed, we're not utilizing some of the components. You can either delete those or leave them on. They don't harm anything by being on the wire sheet as long as they're not connected to anything. All right, so we have our program. Everything's working. Now we can start to follow it. And so, so binary input one feeds binary output one. So let's test this out. If we flip the switch for binary input one, we can see 
binary output one has turned down this green light. And we can see on our wire sheet, this is true and this is true. If we turn the switch off, we can see it changes the false. Binary input two right now is false. It feeds into the in. If you look here, we've set a three second delay time. So let's try it out. One, two, three, and it turned on. You can see the light. Now when we turn it off, there's no delay time. To switch the delay time, we would click the component, and in our properties pane, we would go to delay time, and you could set this for five seconds, or whatever it may be. Now when we click this on, you can see the hold countdown, and after five seconds, it switches to true. Binary input three is this push button. So with our binary input three and the one shot timing, we have a pulse width of six. If we change that to three, let's test it now. One, two, three and it turns off. Now one thing to note is when you have an output, you can see this is enabled, true. If you right click, go to actions, and click disable, now this will not work. You can see our out is true, but it's not feeding the output. If I enable it, it goes true, the light turns on. So universal input one is, has an out of Fahrenheit and it's feeding to the FTOC, which is really Fahrenheit to Celsius. So the in temperature degrees Fahrenheit 70.58 and the output temp degrees Celsius 21.43. For web component, we're gonna change this to a float output. And now you can see it's registering the out temp degree Celsius float value 21.44. For universal input three, we can see the out Fahrenheit right now is 438 degrees. This dial is very sensitive. And this is feeding out to analog output one, which is our voltmeter here. And so it's converting our out min is zero volts, our out max is 10 volts. So if we adjust this, we can see the voltage increases and you can see on our voltmeter, 8.64, which is translated through the reset. So this could be, um, this could be an air handler calling for a motor to ramp up and this is zero to 100%, and right now it's at 86.4%, right? This could translate to many different things. So there you have it. You can see our components are linked, and they're talking to each other, and it's translating onto the controller. We saw binary outputs one, two, three, universal input one, which is feeding a Fahrenheit to Celsius and out to a web component. And we can test that by going to our web components here. And there you can see our value and the wire sheet, it's an output. Universal input three, which is feeding to the reset component, which is translating it out to a voltage from zero to 10 volts. And that's feeding the voltmeter analog output one. So hopefully this basic binary and analog program starts to introduce you to the wire sheet, the kits pane, some of the components, linking the slots. In the next lab, we're going to be building a basic math and logic program. So we're going to start learning about sequence of operation. We'll hopefully build a unit reheat program. And very similar, we'll be utilizing the wire sheet, so don't application editor, and different components. So with that, thanks for watching, and tune in next time.